These guys no. really didn't have skill like that. that Only Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, not like that. Like, see, there's Compared a key word. To Jordan. Not like that. Jordan is level 10. Like, it's like a car, dog. Really? All right. Jordan's competition in that era did not even have the physical tools to keep up with him. So he was basically a Bugatti, and everybody else was Honda, Civic, and most people, like, most everybody, all the shooting guards were 6'4 and but under. Where? They didn't have no jumping ability. I'm of the mindset that when an NBA player is speaking, I should really listen and try to learn what they're talking about. They play the game at the highest professional level there is, especially somebody like a Gilbert Arenas who was really good with his run on the Wizards. But his latest comments, like there was one where he said Nikola Jokic, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant were generational talents. Now I'm hearing him say that there was no really skill level with Michael Jordan and the physicality. We're going to get into that. It's making me wonder, man, Gilbert, are you just doing this because it's it's funny or, you know, I, I don't want to go into his mind and try to really solve his motives. Let's, however, get into what he's talking about, though. Let's really take it seriously and assume this is what he means. So I actually saw online within the past, there was people bringing up a game between the Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors in April of 2002. Gilbert Arenas was a rookie at this time. He wasn't quite the player that he turned into once he joined the Wizards. And in this game, he went up against a John Stockton who was about 40 years old. The Utah Jazz, they won the game. John Stockton in 32 minutes had 26 points, nine assists, two rebounds. And Gilbert Arenas himself didn't play bad at all. He had 16 points, 7 assists, 4 rebounds in 28 minutes. Apparently, he fouled out of the game. I'm bringing this up because, as we know, John Stockton is from the Michael Jordan era. They faced each other two times in the finals. He is 40 years old at this time. He was never known athletically, even in his prime. Yet, he still had enough skill at this age to go on the court and deliver them a win, have a great game. The Utah Jazz were a playoff team that year too. They made the eight seed. Unfortunately, with the Warriors, on the other hand, they lost 60 games. I'm not putting that on arenas. I understand he was a rookie. I'm just reiterating my point that to say Michael Jordan was way above everybody and no one had any skill set whatsoever in this era when John Stockton did what he did against arenas as he was coming into his own era in the 2000s. Which gets into my next point. As players get older, they rely less on their athletic ability and more so on their skill and IQ. And the guys who don't have a lot of skill, high IQ basketball, they're just relying on vertically jumping over everybody. As time goes on, their game doesn't look as good. They kind of fizzle out of the league. This was not the case for Michael Jordan, however. And so what I'm bringing up is in Michael Jordan's early years when he came in the mid 80s, the early 90s, maybe that first, second championship, he relied a lot on his athletic ability. Not to say that he didn't have skill as well, but he was able to jump, dunk, you see all the highlights. As his career started going on into the mid-90s when he went on that second three-peat run, it was not him dunking over people. You don't really see a lot of highlights then of him doing all kind of crazy things. It's more post-up, mid-range. He's really using his strategic mind and picking apart guys with his skill set. And I'm gonna read a, a quote that Hubie Brown said about this. And it goes, as his career moved on, there was a slight step back because of age, but he always had the medium game, those eight to 15 shots that are missing in basketball today. Not only did he have that tough medium game, but he could always finish his drives when he went to the hole because of his incredible leaping ability. At the end of his career, Michael Jordan transformed himself into one of the best post-up players in the NBA. He was nearly unstoppable because he perfected his bump and fadeaway jump shot. That one move, never mind of all the other things that he could do with his back to the basket, made him one of the most dominating post players in the game. My dear friend, what Hubie Brown just explained is all skill. And when I hear Gilbert Arena say that no one could keep up with Michael Jordan athletically, even if that were true, as his time went on in the NBA, obviously he couldn't rely on that anymore, which would mean that they would be able to keep up with him according to Gilbert's original point. We could also take this a step further, looking at Michael Jordan's final years with the Washington Wizards, those two seasons where people said, ah, he's washed up, he don't look that good. Yeah, well, he averaged about, what, 20 points, six rebounds. There's guys in the NBA then and now who could jump out the gym who can't do that. They can't get on the court and produce what Michael Jordan did in those two years. On top of not being able to stop a 39, 40 year old Michael Jordan from putting up what especially was then considered all-star numbers. This is before the whole offensive explosion and the whole game change. 
where now the numbers don't mean as much as it did in these kind of days even in the early 2000s where defense is a lot more tolerated within the aspect of physicality overall the notion that jordan is just dominating because he was so much more athletically gifted than everyone is not true to further hammer home my point you know look at guys like throughout the 80s and 90s a dominique wilkins a sean kemp a clyde drexler even a julius Irvin. YouTube these names that I'm saying and watch your highlights. It doesn't look that much different from what you see now. If anything, you could say that these guys are more athletic than some of the guys we have today. These specific names that I said. Charles Barkley is another name. Don't just see him on inside the NBA. Really go do your homework and watch his highlights, what he was doing, his overall game. Specifically, when he came into the NBA, it was very similar to a Zion Williamson. Not quite the same in terms of dunking ability, but he was definitely dunking on people and showing off his athletic ability. And there's probably other names that I just don't know about since I didn't really get the chance to start watching basketball until the early 2000s. But I did my homework and research on the game since I really love playing basketball, watching it and trying to understand it. And that's why I could give a little bit of knowledge even before my own time. You watch him game in and game out. He saddles up next to guys, he smiles at him, and then goes out there and kicks their ass, and they hug him after the game. Like that was some great thing that he got 45 on them. So I, I don't understand it. Did you take it personally when Ben Gundy called you a con man? Yes, because it, that was never my intent. I was good friends with Oak. I was good friends with Patrick. But I'm not trying to con them to play a different style of play against me. I mean, that to me is like attacking my basketball skills as a sense of saying, only way you win is you make these guys think that you like them. If Michael Jordan feels this way about being called basically a con artist that is befriending players so he could go out there and easily score on them and they won't be, let's say, as intense with guarding Michael Jordan and trying to beat him, and he said, according to him, this is disrespectful towards his basketball skill, I imagine he would feel the same way if somebody said, Mike, no one could keep up with you athletically. That's why you were able to dominate. It's disrespectful to his skill set as a player. But what do I know, man? I'm just a YouTuber. I didn't play professionally, even at the highest level, like a Gilbert Arenas, who looked like a flat out superstar. But then those years that he played with the Wizards. So again, just let me know how you're feeling with the points that he made. What I'm saying, do you agree with them that Michael Jordan was that much athletically gifted? and no one else could really keep up with him or you know do you think that there's a lot more people as i was saying that i may not know throughout the 80s and 90s or that i just mentioned the few players that happen to have some jumping ability let me know man i'm here for the conversation like share and subscribe and as always peace salute for listening bonus part if you made it to the end of the video check out the link in my description which is the kobe bryant mama mentality book it's an amazon link available for online purchase kobe's breaking down the game from his perspective and his mantra that is known as the mama mentality as we all are aware of all right now i'm out